Hey folks, it's Gabe Security.org, and today let's talk about what makes a cryptocurrency gain value. Now, if I knew how to pick specifically which we're gonna gain a lot of value, of course I wouldn't be doing this. I would be selling my crystal ball skills to the highest bidder, but today I wanna talk about what makes a particular cryptocurrency lose or gain value. So let's go ahead and dive in. The overall value of the crypto market has reached up to 1.6 trillion with the T dollars. And here at security.org, we've gone over some of the pitfalls to avoid when investing in the market. We've gone over some of the bizarre elements of the cryptoverse. But let's talk specifically about the myriad factors that go into the rise and fall of any particular coin. Things like demand, investment demand, mining, all those little pieces that ultimately go into the value of a coin. Now, before we dive into this, we need to talk about the distinction between types of coins. There are two primary uh, differences. You have proof of stake and proof of work. And I'm gonna go into each of those today, beginning with proof of stake. Now, proof of stake. Now, if you put up cryptocurrency as a bond to ensure the work of a validator, this is called staking. Now, you can earn more crypto over time doing this, similar to basically how you put money in a bank. The bank kind of lends out your money and therefore you end up with more money uh, in the long run. Kind of bit how staking works. Now, any coin that can be staked this way is a proof of stake cryptocurrency. So some examples of that would be Avalanche, Phantom, Harmony, Solana, and Cardano. Those would be some examples of proof of stake coins. Now, the coins that people are more familiar with are, of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think those are the two most famous ones. And, or maybe Bitcoin and Doge, uh, I should say, are the two most famous ones. But Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example, are proof of work coins. So what causes a proof of stake coin price to go up? Well, basically, if the demand for the coin is outstripping the supply over a long period of time, that value goes up. Now, to break this down, let's talk about demand. Demand can come from users or it can come from investors. Now, when it comes to users, a user might want to play a specific game. They want to might want to trade a token. They might, you know, who knows? They just want to use the coin for one reason or another. Now, each time a user submits a transaction, they have to pay a gas fee. And a gas fee ultimately can end up taking away a lot of the value of that transaction. All right, quick break. Let's talk about what a gas fee is. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right up on the screen. A gas fee is a fee that users have to pay each time they do a blockchain transaction. The more complex the transaction, the more congested the network, the greater the gas fee. On proof of stake networks, most of the gas fee is destroyed or consumed in the process of paying it. So now you can understand that this is one of the forces pushing up the value of any particular coin. So if the number of the transaction on the network is increasing, then the value of that coin will go up. Now in a proof of stake network, as we've talked about, you can delegate your coins to be staked by a validator. Now, validators are required to hold a certain amount of crypto um, to make sure that they are not gonna process any fraudulent transactions. If you want to remember more about that, you can go to um, one of our other videos where we talk about uh, how cryptocurrency actually functions. But you can get an idea that yes, they have to make sure they actually have those things so that they're not making these fraudulent transactions happen. So if you delegate your coins to a validator, it helps to prove that it is trustworthy. Remember, you don't wanna ever do that for anyone you don't trust. Just quick note. When you delegate your coins to a node, they will pay you a rate of return. And of course, the more you give, the more money you get back. So ultimately, this is how you can make money as an investor on a particular coin when you just are you know, giving out or letting people staking your coin for validators. So in short, crypto investors are always looking for opportunities to get high yield on proof of stake coins. And of course, the more of that that happens, the more investors, the higher the rates, there's a competition. So you get it. It creates a demand for particular coins and those coins are really worth a lot of money. So on a proof of stake network, validators get paid out of newly minted coins. So now we're jumping into coin supply. In other words, their rewards are in a sense a form of inflation. Now, if this inflation is too high, it may cause the price of the coin to actually decline. This is especially true if the validators uh, sell most of their rewards in a given year or in a given period of time. For example, let's say a coin is giving 8% a year to validators, but the demand for that coin is 10% a year. So even if 
everyone is selling all the rewards and then if each year, there's still demand for that, there's still a gap, right? But let's say they're paying 50% a year to validators, but the demand is still only that 10% from the previous example. Well, then you're gonna see a decline in the value, right? Because everyone is, if everyone is still selling those rewards at the end of each year. So ultimately, coin supply and proof of stake networks or proof of stake coins uh, is going to affect the price. All right, so let me go ahead and just stake out the factors that can lead to a rise in price for proof of stake coins. So in no particular order, we have a network actually has some fun and useful apps that you know drive demand. Uh, developers are working on new apps that gets people excited about being able to uh, get involved. Uh, the coin has gotten new exchange listings. Maybe you see it somewhere you weren't expecting to see it before. Therefore, more people can have access to it and therefore it's gonna drive up demand. The exchanges on the network are gaining greater liquidity. So, you know, people feel like it's actually gonna be worth something and easy to be worth something uh, in fiat. Maybe the media is talking about that network a lot or maybe it's caught on on social media. And then finally, the network just has a low inflation rate. All right, so now let's dive into proof of work. So what causes a proof of work coin to go up in value? That's what we're gonna try to answer now. In the long run, a proof of work coin goes up in value if the price to produce it goes up. Now this happens if the number of computers mining it increases or the mining reward decreases. Usually the number of miners will increase if the cost of the coin by, I guess you could say, speculative investors increases. So in a sense, you have speculative demand baked into the price of a coin. Now this is confusing. Again, you're not the only one. Uh, when it comes to proof of coin or proof of work coins, if we could figure out what would drive the market, if we knew, you know, we could all have a lot more money. Now, Adam Hayes has written a really interesting uh, paper about this. Uh, we'll maybe put the link here. If not, you can check out the link at security.org. So in short, the TLDR version of this is if people are spending money on the coin faster than the coin can be mined out in terms of rewards, then the price of that coin will go up because people want it, but you can't. So therefore the price of it has to go up. Now you're saying, okay, well, seriously, okay, well, what are some of the factors that might cause people to want it? What increases speculation? What makes people want a coin? And it's uh, a lot of things can do that. For example, if it has a fun, or hilarious uh, logo attached to it. It just seems like a fun thing that people want. That has driven it before. Another one is if the media is paying a lot of attention to the coin. So people say, oh, I've heard about that coin. Let me let me get in on that. I know what that is. Name recognition goes a long way, folks. Uh, it feels one of the first cryptocurrencies out there, you know, a la Bitcoin. That is a big reason why Bitcoin is as big as it is today. If the number of merchants accepting the coin or networks accepting the coin goes up, then that will make it more valuable. And again, just like proof of stake, if it is something that is being listed on a number of exchanges, then that will also uh, cause the price of that coin to go up. So as you can see, lots of reasons that, you know, maybe don't seem so important to a coin, coin's value uh, can't make it pop or not pop. Again, I can't tell you what's gonna go up or what's gonna go down, but I can tell you that if you would like to know what the process is like to buy crypto safely, you can check out our video on that. Uh, we kind of go through what the process is like uh, to buy crypto coin. But anyway, that wraps up today's little video on how cryptocurrencies gain in value. Of course, today's was very much a TLDR version of it. Please drop your comments down below. Would love to hear your thoughts on uh, you know where the market's going. Uh, as of today, it's going down, but I'd love to hear what people are thinking in general, um, and hopefully you still have your shirt. All right, so thanks for watching today's video. If you appreciated it, give us a like, You know, subscribe to the channel. We're always bringing the newest in digital and physical security here at security.org, trying to explain things, trying to make things easy for all of us. My name is Gabe, this is security.org. Be secure.